Hello, and welcome back to the Downforce Drive School, episode 3 on the Editron motor. We are going to look into how the Editron motor works and also how it is tuned with the NXP drive. <laughs> Tuning of the permanent magnet motor, we will break down to these 10 steps. We will after go more detailed into each and every one of them, but in uh, overview it is, first you start with the installation of the latest system software for the NXP and also the latest version of the application you want to use. Uh, application for uh, Permanent magnet motors, usually we use the marina application and also the generator application when there is a shaft generator in question. Motor nominals, you should use uh, not only the PDF uh, data sheet you got, go and look at the motor. Look at the data plate on the motor to make sure that you get this right. This is a typical motor data plate for an Editron motor. Here we see the nominal voltage is 500 volt at 2400 RPM and 240 Hz, which gives a pole pair number of 6. A uh, different motor maybe have the specification like this. Here we have our motor nominal voltage 440 volts at 900 RPM and 90 Hz. Still, it's a 6 pair pole number motor. In the NC drive, you fill in the motor nominals here in the basic parameters. Here we see a motor which is um, motor nominal frequency 280 Hz at 2100 RPM. Uh, still we have limited the max frequency to 240 Hz. Why is that? Because I think the DC voltage was not high enough to give the output AC voltage of 500 volts. So this is a trick to limit uh, the needed DC voltage. Type of motor is permanent magnet synchronous machine. Resolver cabling is quite critical, especially when you use a resolver and not a regular um, uh, incremental encoder or absolute encoder. So the cabling integrity of this is quite important. Also the motor cabling and grounding of the chassis, the grounding of the, the, the casing of the motor towards the drive and the cabinet is quite important to be successful here. Motor cables, we recommend to do three faces inside one shield and the shield is connected in both ends and there is a firm protective earth connection between the drive and the motor. Uh, in some cases we see in the field that it's been used single core phase cables, that is one single core with a shield around it. Uh, the problem with this is that there is a huge stray capacitance to protective earth and you get a lot of leakage current to protective earth. How does this look in the oscilloscope? Let's say you hook up current measurement on the motor cables and here you see something. That is current leaking to the stray capacitance which well, the frequency converter will run happily, and the motor will run happily, but you are pushing a lot of current into your protective earth, which can cause some other calamities, uh, like uh, EMC disturbance on other equipment and so on. DC voltage versus modulation index, what is that? Basically, is do you have enough DC voltage to produce the AC voltage which the motor requires? Parameter setup, we put in the uh, most significant parameters needed for the startup. You could look at a parameter file from another successful uh, uh, tuning, and then you have a start point. And also, of course, the motor nominals is quite critical here. Then we start running the motor in an open loop. Start very slowly, just listen to the motor that everything runs smoothly in case there is a gearbox or whatever. The shaft should be loose. 
Could the gearbox be on? Yeah, maybe, preferably not, but it's possible. Could a ship propeller be on? Well, that should be flat pitch in, the, in that case. When we run in the open loop, we will check then the integrity of the resolver signal, direction, noise, uh, scaling of it, and so on. Then we come to the identification runs, and that is several runs. It will be without rotation, with rotation, encoder run, and then at last we will run ident all. Closed loop tuning, that is the final hand tuning that you adjust a little bit the amplification factors in real times on the closed loop motor control. Take a look at filtering of the encoder signal if, in case you have some um, noise on this signal. So here you can do um, manually, fine, fine. Of course a lot is done with ID runs, but the, the manual tuning in some cases will, will top that tuning to a smoother level. And also it's a little bit about scaling because uh, a small 100 kilowatt motor, the parameters coming default with the application, then when you come to a big motor, 2 megawatt, 3 megawatt propulsion motor, then the amplification factors and stuff slightly different. The Editron motor have a strange name, Permanent Magnet Assisted Reluctance Synchronous Machine. Sounds complicated, but actually it's not. It behaves more or less like any other permanent magnet motor. So when it comes to the tuning, just handle it like a permanent magnet motor. Uh, this part of the name, Reluctance, where does it come from? It comes from how the rotor is designed. If you look into the rotor, it has got the permanent magnet here with all the characteristics that we learned of a permanent magnet motor. We have the back EMF and everything. You can do the ID runs and so on. But it also has an iron piece inside, actually many of them, which goes from one stator pole to another. So if you, with your drive, put a current through here, create a south pole here and a north pole here, then a magnetic flux will go through this iron piece and you have got this magnetic flux. Then when the stator is moved, the computer here starts moving the stator field, then this rotor will follow. It will have a torque developed between the poles here and here and also between the magnets and the pole. So it's got like two types of motors in one rotor.